Now, Mother Nature has taught the refugees at Dadaab a hard lesson. Conserve the environment or perish. But as Ian Wafula reports, it's a lesson well learned. It's a new day here in Dadaab, but the challenges remain the same for the over 300,000 refugees who have dwelt here for 25 years now. The harbour is not spared either. For mothers like her, the greatest task is to provide food for her family other than the rations they receive from NGOs. But there's a bigger problem. Sometimes I go beg people for firewood to cook. I cannot walk as far as they do to collect the firewood. So in demand is the firewood that the harbour says she spends up to 500 shillings a week for a small bag. And sometimes she's forced to provide labour at a fee to meet this cost. Outside the camp is the evidence of Dahabo's struggle in the search for firewood, endless tracts of land that are now bare due to the rampant deforestation. And the little forest cover available now is not enough even for the wild animals here. Yet the demand for trees is still escalating. In the refugee setup, the environment is adversely affected. Because the refugees have been here for the last 25 years, and uh, relying on, on, on the environment for shelter, relying on the environment for firewood, relying on the environment uh, for fencing uh, and many other uses, uh, domestic energy and the rest. Therefore, uh, uh, huge, huge desert belts have been created. However, this will only be for a short while. A few kilometers out of E42 camp, as referred to by the refugees, I meet Janet Mwema, an environmentalist with the Kenya Red Cross Society. I must to plant a tree first before the conversation begins. One can easily notice that the people here have no time to waste, planting as many trees as they can as they try to save the already dying ecosystem. As we talk now, refugees they have to walk like up to three to five kilometers searching for firewood because the surroundings we don't have trees, they have cut down all the trees. So the reason for this project was to replace the lost indigenous trees, again uh, conserve biodiversity, and combat climate change. Already the project is a success. The Kenya Red Cross Society attributing this to the partnership with the refugees here, a number of whom have been assigned portions of land to irrigate on a daily routine. They come with their wives, their children to do the watering and again we are doing what we call agroforestry whereby we encourage them to plant because the, the, the area is protected, we, we have fenced the area and again we have the, the water so we encourage them to plant food crops. First, the host community around here had been uh, attacked by the famine for a very long time but then when they saw and most of them when they have come and uh, we have trained them on the various agronomic aspects, they have gone back home and implement. It is at one of the micro farms that we came across this mouth-watering melon. Its size and rich color depicts the fertility of the land long perceived as unproductive. With every milestone, however, comes its challenges. The balls break down. Maybe the ball may have some technical problems and it breaks down and we go without water. So the seedlings, like, they are maybe a month old or two months old and they need water. The program will soon spread its operations to other parts of the country with the hope of planting at least 2.5 billion trees countrywide. Just hold it carefully. It's really sensitive. Ian Wafula, KTN News.